Thank you for listening. I am Mike Strauss, a.k.a. Strauss21. And I am the number one underground comic, Apollo Taj Mahal. If you like the interview, and we know you will, go ahead and give us a like and a follow on all the social media platforms, whether it is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's all the same, guys. Did You See That Shit podcast. Yeah. You can also find us at didyouseethatshit.com. And Ditcher. Google Play, iTunes, pretty much wherever you find your favorite podcast. By the way, if you enjoyed this interview, go listen to the full podcast and everything we just told you. Yeah, come on. Right now, I want to introduce Kurt Holbaugh. He is a UFC featherweight. I've been watching him fight since like 2013 in Strike Force, man. He's already beaten some of the best guys in the UFC. What is going on, Kurt? Uh, you know, not much, man. Um, just working and training, and you know, I'm ready to get back in there. For sure, man. When are we going to see you back in there? Has, has the UFC, uh, have they offered you anything? Um, you know, uh, there's some talks around June, uh, hopefully one of these early June cards, um, you know, you can see me matched up. I get a lot of grief sometimes because I talk about this uh, UFC 225 card coming up in Chicago, but uh, that's because I'm from Chicago and that's where we do the show from. Uh, that'd be a perfect slot for you then. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I've talked to my management and, um, they, they've kind of said, you know, sometime early June they're working on, there's been some talks and, uh, you know, you got June 1st in New York and I think June 6th in Chicago, so... I pretty much told him I'm down for either one. You know, I'm just ready to, uh, you know, get this thing rolling. Yeah, you know, we can't wait, man. You know, we saw you in the Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series. How was that whole experience? Um, you know, that was a good experience. I really liked it. Uh, everything was really set up nice, um, you know, and you was basically treated exactly like um, you was in the UFC, so it was good. And of course, you know, you looked phenomenal. You didn't waste much time. You did what you had to do. Uh, I don't think a lot of people realize, though, this isn't your first go-round with the UFC. Yeah, you know, um, you know, for people who hadn't followed me and didn't really know, um, probably didn't know that. But, yeah, uh, this ain't nothing new. I've been in this game for a long time. I fought in the UFC. I fought in strike force. I fought top contenders in the world. I fought around the world. So, you know, this was just another step of, uh, you know, I had a bad run in the first go around in the UFC. So, you know, all that did was maybe go outside the UFC and gain just more experience. Now I'm back. I feel like I'm 10 times better. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of good matchups for me. There's a ton of good matchups, man. You, you mentioned, uh, you know, you've been around the world. You fought some of the best. Des Green comes to mind. He's a guy that really has impressed in the UFC. He's a guy that you've already competed against. You've beaten a lot of the top guys already that are making a name for himself in the UFC. Why do you think it took so long for you to, to get back here? Man, you know, it's just really hard. Um, you know, the UFC is not easy to get to. That's every fighter's dream when they start fighting locally and amateur, you know. You know, this is the big leagues, and, you know, it's not easy. you got to put a lot of time in. you got to put a lot of work in. So uh, that, that's pretty much what it comes down to is, you know, putting that work in, stringing together a lot of fights, stringing together a lot of wins, um, and, you know, hoping somebody recognizes you and tries to pick you up and signs you to a management deal. And, you know, from there, they're going to try to push you to the UFC. So you basically just got to keep winning. Yeah, for sure, man, you do, and, and sometimes just winning isn't even enough on its own, you know? Yeah. Gracie Barhart, Louisiana, is, are you still uh, training down there? Um, Yeah, we actually, we call it Gracie United Team Juke House South now. Um, my coach, uh, Raphael Elwanger, he was affiliated with Gracie Baja back in those days. But, uh, you know, since then, we've kind of branched off and done our own thing. So, uh, but yeah, I'm still with the same team that I started out with. We're all still the same guys, you know, just a little name change, and that's pretty much it. Who are some of the guys that you get a chance to train with on a regular basis? Um, you know, I got a lot of my training partners that, uh, you know, probably aren't really well known yet, but most of them are pro. You know, my main training partner is Michael McDonald. Not the UFC's Michael McDonald. He's a different one, but, uh, you know, he's really good. He's got a lot of uh, a lot of talent. He's a really good up-and-comer that um, you'll probably be seeing in some of these bigger shows here soon. You know, and I got a couple more of my guys and teammates. You know, we got some black belts in the gym, some really good stand-up guys that, uh, you know, help me out and give me work. So, you know, we got a lot of guys. That's the way to do it, man. That's the way to do it. So I know that there was a, a little bit of bullshit that went on. You had, like, a little suspension from USADA because of an IV use. It was it was really just a misunderstanding, right? Um. Yeah, you know, basically. And, you know, for one, I never tried to hide anything, and I, I freaking I told on myself, you know. Mm-hmm. 
uh, I never had to really say anything about it, and I would have never got suspended. USADA, um, Nevada, nobody would have ever even known. But um, you know, I, I took that IV after um, after I made weight, and I didn't take it that I needed it. I didn't, you know, I didn't need it. I just took it for because I'm just used to taking it, and mm-hmm. I knew, hey, well, we're not technically fighting in the UFC, so we're not under USADA yet. So I didn't think that. I wouldn't be able to take it, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, it turns out I took it and Nevada had a band on it that I didn't know. They didn't tell me this. Nobody went over anything with me. And I even marked yes, that I was taking it on their, um, on one of their forms on the checkbox. So, um, yeah, you know, I told on myself and they decided to freaking hit me with a pretty harsh penalty. I thought, yeah, I mean, uh, I I didn't think they needed to hit you with uh, with nine months, but uh, it's uh, it's stupid. I mean, the, the whole marijuana thing we're seeing, they're they're really like they just hit Cynthia Calvillo with a really harsh fine. I don't know what they're doing. I mean, I'm all for them cleaning up the sport, but come on, you know, come on. As you said, if you would have known, you wouldn't have taken it. You didn't need to. So I just think that was an unfortunate situation for you men altogether. Not a fight question. Let me ask you, though. If I give you three choices here, you got to marry one, fight one, and keep one as a, like a side chick. If I give you Katzengano, Ronda Rousey, and Kunitsaya. Oh, okay. Katzengano, Ronda Rousey. Yana Kunitsaya. Keep one, marry one. And fight one. And fight one. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll probably keep Ronda Rousey. Mary Casagano and fight the other chick. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, did you happen to see the Ortega and Edgar fight, man? Um, you know, I had some guys fighting that night, so I didn't actually get to watch it, but I seen the highlights, and uh, man, Ortega's for real. No one expected him to win that way, right? Yeah, you know, everybody knows he's a submission guy, but man, anytime somebody can land a clean elbow like that, you know, that's uh, that's a fight ender right there, man. So if there was one guy that you could pick to fight, is there, is there someone that you have in mind, or are you just ready for anybody? Um, Yeah, you know, there's a couple guys that come to mind. I've always uh, wanted to fight Connor's boy, Artem Loba. Um, You know, I would do a rematch with Matt Bissett. Of course, I keep a couple guys on my mind. <laughs> Both of those fights sound good right there, man. I think I think Artem's tied up, but I don't know if Matt Bissett is. That'd be a great fight. Another rematch from the, the Dana White series. You wrecked him in that, though. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything else that you'd like to add, man? Uh, you, you floor is yours. Would you like to shout your sponsors? Um, yeah, for sure. You know, my team, Grace United Team, Joke Out South, all the guys that uh, show up every day, day in and day out, and help me out. Um, my management, Sucker Punch Entertainment. Um, you know, some sponsors, uh, K-Ray Construction, Monster Inc., Alienware. I'm pretty sure uh, they're always hitting me up uh, with some good sponsorships. So, yeah, man, you know, thanks to all those guys. And uh, we're going to continue working hard and until we get to the top. Well, I appreciate your time, and I can't wait to see what the UFC has for you. I think that you're one of the very exciting additions to the UFC's roster this year, and uh, I can't wait to see uh, see what they got planned for you. Real quick, man, if you could, we kind of have a tradition here. If you could just say this is Kurt Hollibaugh, and you're listening to the Did You See That Shit podcast. Yeah, this is UFC featherweight Kurt Hollibaugh, and you're listening to the Did You See That Shit podcast. I appreciate it so much. Not a problem, man. Thanks for having me on. Anytime, brother. Thank you. It's time.